Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at phagocytosis, the immune response and vaccination. The immune system is the part of the body that goes and fights off infections. It's made up of specific immune responses and non-specific immune responses. Phagocytes are there to go, they attract pathogens and other things as they recognise as non-body towards them and they'll go and engulf them so they surround them and go and break them down. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell. The white blood cells are involved in the specific immune response and produce antibodies. And vaccinations when you're injected with either a dead or a weakened pathogen and that goes and that gets the body's immune system ready for when it comes into a proper or functioning version of that pathogen. So the process of phagocytosis is where phagocytes will go down and break down pathogens by taking them in. The first stage involves the pathogens producing chemicals that attract the phagocytes to them. The phagocytes recognise non-human proteins or antigens on the surfaces of these pathogens. The phagocyte takes the pathogen into it and encloses it into a vacuole called a phagosome. This contains or combines with a lysosome which injects into it hydrolytic and digestive enzymes that destroy the pathogen. Most of the pathogen pieces are then ejected or chucked out of the phagocyte. Lymphocytes, so uh, white blood cells, these recognise proteins on the surface of pathogens called antigens. Lymphocytes detect that these are foreign, so not from the body, and will produce antibodies against it. So, lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell, like we've just said. Lymphocytes detect when things are foreign. Uh, they produce antibodies, but because it takes them a while to get going, it can take a few days. Some pathogens produce toxins, which make you feel ill. Lymphocytes also produce antitoxins which neutralise these toxins. Both antibodies and antitoxins are highly specific to the antigen on the pathogen. And finally, if the body encounters a particular antigen, so your lymphocytes might recognise it, if they do, they clone themselves in order to make lots and lots of antibodies against that particular pathogen. Memory cells are also created which remain in your bloodstream for a long time so the next time you encounter that pathogen you will have a much faster immune response. So the process that this takes is that the lymphocyte moves towards the pathogen. It then breaks it down by phagocytosis. Part of the pathogen, called an antigen, is attached to another protein on the cell surface of the B lymphocyte, so the B cell. A T lymphocyte, or a T helper cell, will go and bind to this antigen and will activate the B cell, so it will get the B cell going. The B lymphocyte then turns into a plasma B cell. Your plasma B cells contain lots of ribosomes, so will produce lots of antibodies that will bind onto the antigen that it's been activated by. And some of these B cells will turn into memory B cells, so the next time you come into contact with that pathogen, you'll have a much faster immune response. A question that you might be asked are that white blood cells are part of the immune system. White blood cells 
help the body defend itself against pathogen. Describe how pathogens cause infections and describe how the immune system defends the body against it. So pause the video, have a think about it, then have a look at the answer. So the things that you would need to think about when answering this would be how do viruses cause disease? How do bacteria cause disease? What is phagocytosis? What are antibodies? And how are antibodies produced? And some of the things that you might include might be things like bacteria and viruses are pathogens. They're reproducing inside your body. They're producing toxins which will affect the body. Viruses are living inside of cells so that damages the cells. The white blood cells will go and ingest the pathogens by phagocytosis. They will produce antibodies against it, antitoxins and memory B cells which will lead to long term immunity. Vaccines are a dead or altered form of the pathogen, but which still have the same sort of antigens on its surface. So a vaccine contains dead or weakened pathogen, which still has the antigens as the normal pathogens. Your body will produce an immune response against the vaccine in the same way as it would a normal pathogen. So therefore, the body's immune response produces memory B cells against that particular antigen in the vaccine. So the next time your body comes into contact with that antigen, it will produce antibodies against it very, very quickly. Question that you might be asked are that vaccines can be used to prevent an illness in a person. Explain how this works. So pause the video, have a think through it then have a look at the things that you could include. One thing that you need to think about is what is a vaccination? What do vaccines contain? What cells respond to vaccines? And what do these cells secrete into the bloodstream? And what other types of cells are produced? So some of the things that you may include in your answer will look at a vaccine containing a dead or an active pathogen. The white blood cells are responding to it. They produce antibodies that are specific to the pathogen. Next time they'll go and produce B cells. So the next time that you come into contact with that pathogen, you will make antibodies in a larger quantity which will increase the immune response. If we go and have a look at this graph, this graph shows how the primary response, so the first response against a pathogen or a specific antigen, is very different from what's called a secondary response, because the secondary response is going to involve memory B cells. So we can see that during primary infection, the antibodies slowly increase and then peak around 10 days. Is. Whereas the second time you're exposed to the pathogen, you get a much quicker response and a much higher amount of antibodies being produced, which stay in the bloodstream for a lot longer. One thing that we might want to think about are what are the main differences between primary and secondary response. You'd need to go and talk about the amount of antibodies being produced, how long each response lasts for, and how quickly the antibodies are produced. A question that focuses on that is that the graph shows the concentration of antibodies in a person's bloodstream after injections of a vaccine. Describe what happened to the concentration of antibodies in the blood from week zero to week seven. So some things that you need to think about before answering this question 
was what was the increase after the first injection? What was the increase after the second injection? And how long do the antibodies stay in the bloodstream for after each injection? So pause the video, have a go at it, then have a look at the things that you need to include. So some of the things that you could include, things about it rising up to three weeks, it dropping after four weeks, it then rising again after seven weeks, after you get a second injection. The second injection causes it to go a lot higher than the first injection. And the second injection, the concentration of antibodies in your bloodstream lasts for a lot longer. Thanks for watching.